Hello, hello, and happy 2020. I am so excited to be here today to talk to you about creating your goals for 2020. And I know we're already in 2020, but I know so many of us kind of wait or we really just start to think about that in that break between Christmas and New Year's. And so today I want to walk you through the process that I take in creating my 2020 goals. For me, I have two little children, and so I've been completely unplugged for the last couple of weeks, and it has been amazing. This is probably one of the first times in two or three years that I've been completely unplugged. I took a lot of the social media apps off of my phone so that I didn't like tempt myself to log in. I unplugged from email, I unplugged from my phone, I unplugged from, like I said, from the social media, and I've really just been kind of quiet on the platforms and it's been super duper refreshing. And if you haven't ever taken the time to completely unplug, I highly recommend it because it was in that time of completely unplugging that I really got a lot of clarity around the direction that I want to go with my business around really who I am as a person and what's super important to me and where I want to go and what I want to do and just really stepping into that best version of myself again and again and again. And it was in that space that I really was able to just slow down and I spent a fair amount of time just reflecting on 2019. I really reflected on where I thrived and where I really, really struggled. And it's very uncomfortable to look at the places where you struggled and give yourself an honest assessment. It's a really, really hard thing to do, but when you do it, you can get great clarity around where you need to create systems <laughs> to help you thrive. And I know one thing for me that was a consistent theme in 2019 that I'm going to make some massive changes around in 2020 is that I was very indecisive, especially as a leader to my team. And it cost me money, it cost me relationships, it cost me so, so, so much. I learned that through the reflection, right? Like I was on the fence about a lot of things and me being on the fence then forced decisions on me that I might not necessarily have taken or I would get super duper frustrated because I wasn't being decisive even though I knew in my gut exactly what it is that I wanted. And so for me, I wanna be really, really decisive when it comes to 2020. I wanna make sure that I'm taking action and making decisions, like concrete decisions, like giving myself permission to have a day to think about it. I'm a projector, that's what we need. <laughs> but once I make that decision, really just owning it and going to that next step and taking that action on that decision. How does that tie into goals? So I always love to reflect on the old and then look at the new when it comes to goals. Like, so I look where I succeeded really well in 2019, where I struggled, if I hit all my goals, what goals I hit, what goals I didn't, and why. And then what I like to do is I like to kind of go through and divide up my goals into different categories or roles, okay? And I like to do it this way because I am not a one dimensional person. I am not just an entrepreneur. So when I do this, I take my goals and I divide them up. I do personal goals. I do business goals. I do goals as a wife. I do goals as a mother. I do personal financial goals. I also do goals around my house. I included a lot of my hobby goals inside of my personal goals and I highly recommend that you have those. <laughs> I think it's a really, really important thing to make sure that you have passions outside of your business that you can do that aren't necessarily related to your you know, kids, significant other, husband, wife, partner, whatever. And so I am a huge fan of actually taking the time to 
write these down. So I write all my goals in my notebook here and I've got several pages of them, five pages of goals here and some of them are habits that I wanna create, some of them are goals to achieve, some of them are things that I wanna do, whether it's you know getting in one monthly date night with my husband or reading to the kids four or five times a week. So I kind of like to take each category and then break it down one step further because for many of us, we have these goals that we wanna achieve, but to get to the goals, we have to create certain habits that actually help us to get there. And oftentimes we do really, really well out of the gate. And we do well out of the gate because we're like, yeah, we're excited about it. But then, you know, the mundane gets into play and it becomes really, really hard to sustain said goals. Because oftentimes we try to take on too many initiatives at one time. And so I know for me, when I have like, here's the end goal and here's the habit that I need to create to reach said goal, it makes a huge difference for me. If you've read the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, it's an awesome book where he talks about habit stacking. So one thing for me on a personal level is that I, A, want to read more this year and I want to continue to deepen my meditation practice and I also want to journal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to habit stack those three together along with my morning exercise to make sure I do all of those things in a row. And when you think about the goals that you want to achieve and then you take, think about the habits that you need to create to reach said goal, that's how you're actually going to achieve it. And so step one is writing down all the goals. And I personally, like I said, I love to actually physically write down the goals because I think it makes a huge difference because you slow yourself down. I was looking at my goals for 2019 and then I looked at my goals for 2020 and I was like, oh my God, I like so mindlessly created so many of these because I was just on the computer type of that and they weren't necessarily really a priority for me. And it was reflected at the end of the year when I had like this list of, you know, 50 personal goals that I wanted to achieve. And I was like, what was I thinking? There was zero chance I was ever gonna be able to get all that done, number one. And number two, most of these things are just kind of like, meh, if I achieve it, great. If I don't, I don't. And so, I very deliberately wrote everything down this year. And you know, some of the things, like I said, are about habits. Like one of my personal goals is keep concrete boundaries around work. And that to me is really, really important because I wanna be ever present with my children. And I really wanna be able to show up as an amazing mother and not just an exhausted mother at three o'clock who's gonna stick them in front of the TV when we get home. I wanna actually be able to be present and engage them and really just be an awesome mother, an exceptional mother. That like That's really, really important to me. And so I look at what does it mean to be an exceptional mother? Like, how can that be a goal? And I then said, okay, how can I define this, right? Like, what does being an exceptional mother mean? And I know this is a little on like the personal side, but I think it's important to have both the personal goals and the business goals, and then kind of goals around the different roles that we play and things that we have to do. So like for me, we own a two family. And so I want to do a big remodel this year. That's one of my goals. And so I know I have certain things that I have to do to actually make that goal happen. Uh, same thing for business. You know, one of the things I'm just looking at the goals here, we're sitting right next to me. I want to continue the habit of one OMG day per week. I want to only work four days a week in the summer. I only want to work three days because my kids are off. I'm making some very deliberate decisions. And so when you think about what it is that you want to achieve, I want you to think about, hey, what is it that I want to achieve? And then what is the habit that I need to create to actually make that happen? And I believe that if you kind of look at your goals like that and you take them one step further, I think that that will be super duper helpful for each of you in actually achieving those goals. Because oftentimes what happens is we get so excited about doing these goals that we try to move A, too many forward, and then B, you know, rather than taking one goal and figuring out what are all the habits that we need to create in order to achieve that goal, or what are all the things that we need to do in order to achieve that goal, many of the goals that we want to achieve or the things that we want to do are related to one really high level goal. Like for the business, for example, um, I want to put a hundred members in my business ecosystem. 
group. I know that I need to do a weekly YouTube to do that. I need to do a weekly blog with a thousand to three thousand words. I need to do two podcasts. I need to finish my social media book. I need to hire an assistant. I need to payroll myself. You know, these are all the things that I need to do to make that happen. Like I need to bring on, you know, I have a part-time assistant currently who works like 10 hours a week. I want to bring on a full-time assistant. And these are all things that are all related to that one big goal right because i know if i have a full-time assistant then i can take off a lot of the workload that i have that are kind of mundane tasks i know that if i finish my book i will get more exposure i know that if i do two podcasts per week and i get myself on one podcast per week i will be able to get more exposure you know all of these things they all stack upon one another to ultimately help me achieve that 100 members in business ecosystem builders so i would love for you if you've already created goals for 2020 to A, share them in the comments below, but also take it one step further. What are those habits you need to create to achieve those goals? And I'd love for you to share them with me or drop any questions that you have below. I love this topic. It's one of my favorite topics to talk about because I truly believe that, you know, the setting of the goals is just the first part. You then have to take action and create habits and actually implement these things to get to where you want to go and what you want to achieve. And that's what I absolutely love to do. I love to help clients do that. And I love to do that for myself because I really truly believe when you have freedom in your business and you have, it creates freedom in your life and it creates freedom in the ability for you to make as much or as little money as possible. It creates freedom for you to really just be who you want to be and reach your full potential. And so I am so excited for 2020 and I'd love for you to drop some comments below. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We're doing new YouTube videos weekly on Tuesday. So stay tuned. We got some good stuff planned in store.